morning and welcome to Unspoken. Um, I'm down with a cold or some sinus or something, so my voice is a little different this morning. But nevertheless, we're going on in the name of the Lord. I bless you. I thank you for coming into, for me coming into your house, your car, wherever you are. I thank you for that, and I bless you in the name of the Lord. Let's talk about today. I know we're all going through something. If you're not going through something, you're coming out of something. And then some of us are getting ready to go back into something. So I want to talk about warfare and how we process through, through warfare. Because the scripture says that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So, so we have to have a defense. You got to put up a defense. You need to know how to deal with things that come up against you. You don't always have to hold your your head your head in your hand and and you don't know what to do. There is a resolution and it's in the word of God. So let's go to the word of God. Uh Joshua chapter 6 verses uh, 6 verses 1 through 5. Joshua chapter 6 verses 1 through 5. So I'm going to read this scripture and then we're going to talk about it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The word of the Lord says, Now Jer Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its kings and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city all you men of war, you shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horn before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout. Then the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up, every man straight before him. Wow. I'm not going to talk about praise and how when you shout, the walls come down. We're going to go a little bit deeper. So, so, it's, so the scripture says uh, that it was... Jericho had closed its gates and it was barred. My. And, and so it was it was impenetrable. You couldn't nobody could get in, nobody was going out. And then the Lord says, But I have given, he tells Joshua, I have given you the city. So what situation in your life looks that way? What are you dealing with that looks like you can, oh, Rabbi Shaya. You can't get around it. You can't go through it. You can't get in it. What situation in, are you facing in your life that has you at a standstill? That the enemy has built a wall around, oh, Jesus, and you can't get in. What do you need to happen? What well, what needs to happen? Uh, and I'm not talking about shouting. Now, let's listen to what the Lord said. The Lord says, he says to Joshua, listen, verse 2. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hands, its kings and the mighty men of valor. Wow. He says, I, the Lord, I have given Jericho into your hands. So, so Jericho was one of the nations that denied the sovereignty of God. And so the battle you're facing is about is not about what you see, oh Jesus, but it is about your spiritual inheritance, your spiritual destiny. You're fighting for more than just what you see. Ah, Jesus, hallelujah. So to understand the scripture, let's let's look at some events that's surrounding this battle. So we go to Joshua chapter 5. Verse 1, so it was when all the kings of the Amorites who were on the west side of the Jordan and all the kings of the Canaanites who were by the sea heard, listen, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan from before the children of Israel until we had crossed over, that their heart melted and there was no spirit in them any longer because of the children of Israel. So what is happening, uh, uh, um, 
uh, J the Lord is telling the children of Israel, I need you to cross over the Jordan River. And the Jordan River was just like the Red Sea. But God parted the Jordan River. And so this is what God is talking about. But I want to focus on his enemies. Oh, Jesus. So he, he talks about the Amorite. The Amorite means to boast. It means to boast of yourself. The Canaanites were these people included giants, so they were a powerful people. So the walls of Jericho had become a source of pride for the people because they thought, oh Jesus, they thought that nobody could get in. They thought that they were safe. Oh, but but God had a different plan. Listen, so Joshua 3.10 says, and Joshua said, by this you shall know that the living God is among you and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Hivites and the Parasites and the Gagashites and the Amorites and the Jebusites. Listen, God said, I'm going to drive out everything that's hindering you, oh Jesus, from crossing over, from going to that next level in me. I'm going to drive them all out. But the basis of all of this was fear, oh Jesus. Mm. That word Hittite means, oh Jesus, a frightened by fear. A frightened means sudden and great fear. What's come upon you suddenly, oh Jesus. You didn't expect it, but it comes upon you suddenly, oh Jesus. The, 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 the fact that, that, that Rahab's wall uh, was, um, uh, Rahab was the prostitute, um, that her house was on the wall of Jericho. And so that wall represented fear. So the fear can become a wall all around us and will fence us in because we're afraid to go forth. One thing about fear, let's talk about fear for a minute. One thing about fear is that it will take you further than you want to go because it begins, and when you begin to entertain fear, then all kind of thoughts begin to come into your mind, and so it takes you further than you want to go. And so we, 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 we play this script in our mind. The enemy plays it in our mind, and we go for it. And when you go for it, you have tapped in, it will call Shia. You have tapped in to that demonic realm, and then he's going to drive you, oh Jesus. He will drive you to do things out of God's will. Hallelujah. So listen, so listen, God is saying, God is saying, I've got this. He's telling Joshua, listen, I got this, oh Jesus. I'm going to give you the city because I got this, oh Jesus. So listen, listen, Joshua 6 and 5. And it shall be up, it shall be upon an extended blast with the ram's horn. When you hear the sound of the chauffeur, all the people shall cry out with a great scream. And the wall of the city will sink into its place and the people shall, shall invade each man straight ahead. This is the complete Jewish Bible. Listen what it says. That the wall of the city will sink oh, into its place and the people shall invade it. The Jewish sages believe that the wall just didn't crumble. Oh, because the wall of the city was too big. So it edible, cool, shy. Listen, look how big God is. The wall just didn't crumble. It sunk, Jesus, down into the ground. Oh, hallelujah. So that the children of Israel could just step across it. And they could just step across. Look how big God is. We forget that God is king, that God is the king of the universe, that Jesus is king of kings, that he is enthroned in a heavenly places, right? So we forget that and we reduce him to our own mindset. We reduce Jesus to what we think and what we feel. But I'm here to tell you today that God, he designed time. So he sits outside of time. He is not, he is, he is not, uh, he's not committed to doing anything in time. He can do it outside of time. Hallelujah. So listen, the, the, the scripture says that, that the Jewish scripture says that the city just sunk. Oh, hallelujah. Just sunk, oh Jesus, into the ground. Oh God. So what does that say? What does that say? Uh, that says that, listen, Joshua 
follow the instructions of God, of the Lord, of the Spirit of the Lord. Read the scripture. Don't just take my word for it. Joshua followed the instructions of the Lord to the T. So what does that tell me? That tells me that relationship plus obedience releases a supernatural outbreak of God's power. Listen, relationship plus obedience releases a supernatural outbreak of God's power. Listen, this is what happens. Jo Joshua chapter 5 verse 9. Then the Lord said to Joshua, this day, <laughs> this day, I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. Therefore, the name of the place is called Gilgal to this day. So that word reproach, it means the verbal taunting of the enemy. He taunts you. He tries to, uh, um, he tries to convince you that you're not going to make it. Whew. He tries to convince you that the problem is bigger than you are. And you have no other recourse. Listen, that's the verbal taunting of the enemy. But what does the Lord say? This day, oh, hallelujah, I have rolled away the reproach. So he is rolling away the reproach of the enemy. So he's rolling away the verbal taunting of the enemy. Now, listen, I can teach you all day. And I can be here all day and talk to you all day. But you got to take you got to take a stand. You got to be the one to say, wait a minute, hold it up. Draw a line in the sand and say, listen, you can't cross the bloodline. Hallelujah. So listen, that word Gilgal is the place where the priests stood firm and the waters of Joshua were cut of, of uh, Jericho, of the Jordan were cut off. So listen, what this is a place where there was a supernatural outbreak of a miracle of God. If you need a supernatural outbreak, you got to do what he's saying to do. You can't go in your own strength. You got to follow directions. A lot of us got issues. We don't want to follow directions. We don't we we want to be in control. But God says, "No, no. I am requiring of you this day obedience and relationship so that you can have a supernatural outbreak of the miracles of God in your life. Oh, hallelujah. Listen, we need that. I need that. You need that. So I'm here today to tell you, I know you're going through. We all go through something, but we have a choice. We have somebody in our corner that's saying, listen, do exactly what I say. Follow me, get in relationship with me, and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. So listen, I want, I don't know about you, but I want the verbal taunting of the enemy to be rolled away. Oh, Jesus. And only a God who's he's able to do it. The scripture says that he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. So nothing is too hard for God. Whose report will you believe? Are you going to listen to the taunting of the enemy or are we going to put some war clothes on and begin to fight with the word of God? Begin to stand on the word of God. Ask God for a scripture. If you're going through asking for a scripture, then you can stand on, oh Jesus. And once you stand on that scripture, you war with that scripture and you, you're in relationship plus obedience and you will have a supernatural outbreak of the miracles of God. Listen, I bless you in the name of the Lord. Uh, uh, subscribe to us. Like us. I love you. Shalom. Shalom.